Mayonnaise is just good with everything. I could eat it. I could eat, I'll be honest, I could eat like a spoonful of mayonnaise, but whatever. They're gonna call me Mayonnaise Boy now, so whatever. Mayonnaise Boy, coming to a city near you. <laughs> What's up, I'm Jaden, and I'm gonna answer 20 questions for 2024. It was a bit, the whole thing. No, um, I think I, I, I've been waiting to answer this question because I think it was just a human moment, you know? I was really insecure about everything I was doing, so I was like, I'm gonna change everything. I'm gonna be a pop star now. And then I went to South America and Brazil, and I saw uh, thousands of fans with like JXD and tattooed on them. I was like, oh my gosh, what have I, what have I done? You know what I mean? I think I just had a manic moment. I was just being manic. That's really all it is. I mean, it was almost symbolic for me. I wanted to kind of shed some of the, the weight that I had in the past off, and uh, it feels good. It feels like my new look. I'm gonna keep it for a while. When they hold up their like phones, and it's so tiny, and they're in the back of the room, and I'm like. I don't know, I get intrigued because I have ADHD and I'm like, what does it say? And they're like, daddy. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm singing a song about sadness, <laughs> you know what I mean? From being a kid, it's either JB or Iggy Azalea, randomly. Because I didn't listen to a lot of music growing up. I was a very conservative household, so I only got to listen to radio. And Iggy was popping when I was like in elementary, you know? Um, so that's all I listened to. <laughs> Fancy. Oh my God. No one did it like her. She changed everything. So shout out to Iggy Azalea. Never Say Never era is like really what resonates with me. That's the reason I started singing. As a kid, I was nine years old and I saw the, the documentary and I remember crying as a nine year old. I don't know, I just felt this, I think that was the first introduction to like the love of music um, that I have now. And it didn't fully develop until later on, but that was definitely the start of, for my voice at least. I love Frank Sinatra. Um, I love Billie Eilish because she takes a lot of reference from old, older music like that, so anything that just has some history and culture to it, because uh, I know that I can, and I want to show that off, you know? I don't know if I've accurately presented myself online, but <laughs> I really care about, like, kindness. That's, like, a big thing for me. I've done a lot of f***ed up in my life, so it seems like I'm kind of just a f but I love being kind to people. It's a, it's a big value of mine. I've written Love Leads to Change on a lot of people. I know what it feels like to be unloved, so I just want to make people feel loved. You know. After I was really manic, you know, as people are, I, I called Travis and I was like, you know, I really feel like I made a mistake trying to change everything so frantically. And I don't want to hit, you know, I want to make good music because that's what we did for my first album and it just worked out so well. I mean, he, no question was like, okay, let's do that. And the first time we went in the studio, it, it felt like it was one of the first times we got in the studio like three years ago and it was just so refreshing. and. We had a lot of fun, and that's when I knew that I'm, I was doing something that I was supposed to do because I was having fun, and I hadn't had fun in a long time. The Descendants character. When I started signing with Travis, after like a year, he would always organically put me on his stuff, and like I would come and be like, oh, I found this band called Boxcar Racer, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's my band. And I was like, oh, crazy, and then um, he added a tattoo of Miles on his leg, and I was like, who is that? And he was like, this is The Descendants. I was like, that's The Descendants, and I went home, and I was just um, stoked about it. I hate heights. Also the ocean, the ocean's terrifying. Also the space, I would never go to space. Crazy. I watched Game of Thrones for the first time, probably like two months ago. I finished the entire show in seven days. I just didn't do anything but watch Game of Thrones. I watched like 10 episodes a day, a season a day, and it was great, and my life changed. Who hasn't had a crush on the evil girl from um, Kim Possible? She was sick. She still is sick, wherever she's at. <laughs> the girl from Tangled, Rapunzel. As a kid, I loved that. Also Cinderella. I wanted to be Cinderella when I was a child. I only watched Cinderella when I was like five years old. And my mom told me this like recently growing up and I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense, you know? <laughs> okay, there's one that I'm not, um, like I'm a part of, but it's with like some of my fans on Instagram and it's called the Talking Besties. And they're like my core fans. And I pop in every once in a while, I see what they're saying, they're hilarious, so. I don't ever really answer though because I kind of get scared because I'm like, what if they're talking shit about me? <laughs> That's crazy. I think success is a feeling, it's not like an outcome for me. I, I got really caught up in the success of it all when I, when I first came into the scene and, and I was blessed with so many opportunities that just happened so fast. When that started to die down and also personal stuff in my life came up, um, it felt like I wasn't succeeding, you know? But I, I realized through a lot of like painful lessons um, that success is is progress, you know, that's it, you know. Um, it's not a certain point that you can get to, it's just whatever is showing yourself that you're still in it and you're still doing it. And I've gotten to the point where I've almost given up, so the fact that I didn't, that's success to me. Jelly Roll is actually someone I think about quite often, just because of who he is as a person. I love that, I love what he stands for. I love mayonnaise so much. I really love mayonnaise. I could eat a mayonnaise sandwich, that's how much I love it. 
But just mayonnaise and anything, mayonnaise and fries, mayonnaise and pizza, mayonnaise is good, bro. I, I, when I went to Venice for the first time, they don't have like ranch and shit. And so I just ate my fries with mayonnaise and because they do that over there. And I was like, whoa, this is delicious. So it kind of changed my life. Mayonnaise is just good with everything. I could eat, I could eat, I'll be honest, I could eat like a spoonful of mayonnaise, but whatever. They're gonna call me mayonnaise boy now, so whatever. Just like, just straight out of the cabinet in the fridge, just a dollop of mayonnaise. Delicious, bro. <laughs> oh, it's my announcement for my album. It's a link to the announcement of my album. So that's really exciting. I didn't even do that on purpose, that's crazy. I make music that's real, music that hurts, and music that feels good, so. Uh, no matter where you're at, if you're confused, you know, listen to this album because uh, that's exactly what it's about. I would ask them, what do you hear when the music stops? Well, I hope you guys learn more about me and my love for mayonnaise, but uh, make sure that you check out my album out June 28th, um, also the tour following that, and everything in between. I have a lot of cool stuff coming uh, for the promotion of this album that I've never done before, so stay tuned.